Get out of my way. That was a burnout. Hello, and welcome to an episode of City Car Driving. Now, this is a car that I really like. Probably can't tell what it is right now unless you know this sort of car. I mean, don't look at that. That looks like a Jaguar. But anyway, if uh, we get to the outside cam, this is a... Oh, camera. Okay. This is something like a... I think it's the E60 BMW. <laughs> oh, God. I think I'm wrong. Maybe. I, I believe it's the E60 BMW. Anyway, this is my favorite of these BMWs. Now, the reason why this is my favorite is because this is the less naturally aspirated BMW, really, um, when it came to the M5s. Then they went to the turbocharging and stuff like that. Anyway, this is a V10. Okay, this is the full-on, four, full-bore, four-roar V10. I mean, it doesn't sound like that in the game. Or maybe I'm wrong. Okay, so they actually did put in a custom sound for this mod. I'm impressed most of the mods I get into don't have a custom sound at all. Anyway, because the 8,000 RPM, or you could actually, if you wanted to, in real life, you're able to modify these up to about 9,000 RPM. Just change the rev limiter without any issues. So, throw it in reverse. Wait. Now, I've had some issues with the clutch in the game, but right now it seems to be pretty smooth. Yeah. It's just kind of slippy. Now, even though I am driving a V10 BMW, I'm not going to be driving like an idiot. I'm going to be driving sort of normally. Keep in mind, I did say sort of. This is also my favorite BMW, just because it's not crazy with technology and stuff like that, even though it's much more te technologically advanced than the Mercedes of this time. Now, I really like Mercedes. It's just that Mercedes is going to be a lot more reliable, and I knew that at the time that this thing was released. People were like, okay, let me just get out of the traffic here. Uh, so people were like, wow, Mercedes, that's so old-fashioned when they looked at that sort of engine and no new technology. And they were throwing all sorts of technology into this engine. And, oh, okay. I think I got good brakes there. They were doing all sorts of technology with this. And also, what they did with this is they took a manual transmission, hooked up a pump to it, and told the computer, hey, listen, control this. And really, um, well, you didn't have a clutch pedal, so it wasn't like a normal manual. But there was manual a manual option in North America. However, the issue with the uh, automatically controlled manual transmission was that they liked to brake a lot, uh, along with the engine, uh, like to grenade. So, really, this is this engine is considered to be a legend. Even though it's a bit breaky, you know. Okay, I go over uh, not really any of a bump. It's like brake sound. Oh, maybe that's a tr just the transmission. No, wait, this is the manual. It's fine. So these cars had an issue with uh, the variable the variable valve timing. So the variable valve timing on this is called Vanos, and they had a separate oil pump just for the Vanos, and the Vanos pump loved to fail. So what that would do is it would send uh, it would send pieces of metal just into the engine, destroying it. And then, they also had issues with the rod bearings. And the rod bearings, um, so, normally on cars, the rod bearing is, they last the life of the car. But in this car, after a little while, and BMW was like, oh, okay, we have issues with that. They put it up as a maintenance item. Mainly so that they wouldn't have to pay for it out of warranty. But... Yeah, so there's a maintenance item for it. Um, so at around 100,000 miles, you have got to get those bearings replaced, or else you could be looking at a very serious injury build. And I just turned on the wrong turn signal, okay. I said I was going to drive it kind of normally, so but I say kind of, so let's see what this has. Go to outside camera, actually. Okay, now from a stop, just want to see what sort of acceleration it says. Oh yeah, I can do a burnout. I like feels a little louder though. I can probably just turn it up in editing. The manual transmission in this game is kind of funky though. So yeah. it's only a five speed in the game. In real life, this is a six speed. I uh, now the thing is is that. 
I have got to get one of these cars in a motor. I just have to. I know that, well, really, when you look at this car, don't look at it as a $26,000 car, or if you get a cheap one, $16,000, and just say, oh, okay, it's going to be that expensive. Look, just add about $10,000 to the price of it, because that's about the money that you're going to want to spend in repairs. As soon as you get one of these, if it hasn't had rod bearings, then you're going to want to do that. You're going to want to do the Vanos pump, and you're definitely going to probably, if you're putting a lot of miles on the car, do the transmission. So in general, Mercedes is more reliable. Oh, yeah, that's an issue with the uh, transmission. It, it likes, well, this, mainly this car, actually, it loves to rev. See, look, clutch in, just a little bit of throttle, and it just revs. It revs a little, but then it, like, once you actually put your foot all the way down, it doesn't rev as fast. So, so like, half throttle. That's not even half. That's half, and then full throttle. It's, like, the same. That's the issue. And also, the clutch doesn't like to actually engage. It likes to be almost like a torque converter. That's how it engages. I wonder, can I stall it? Yes, I can. Can you just listen to that thing? Now, I really like Mercedes, and this guy in front of me is very drunk. Maybe because he's looking at the beauty of my car. Get out of my way. That was a burnout. Whatever. So, I like Mercedes. I like BMW. I don't really prefer one. It's just, I know that Mercedes is going to be more reliable. When it comes to the actual engine, electronics, they're about the same. Uh, both of them like, they love to have failing electronics. It's just that. But here's the thing. When you look at a BMW, there's racing sportiness to it. And it's not a dead end crap. Okay, yep. Yeah. Mercedes was always kind of luxury first, sportiness second when it came to their sporty cars. BMW is sports first, luxury second. But they were very close first and second with really both of them when it came to Mercedes AMG cars and BMW's M cars. It's just, really with the BMW there was sort of, you're, you're paying for the fact that it's an M car. It's so sporty. The really the only difference that you can okay, okay whatever it's a dead end again. Okay, didn't want to do that, but I did have to. Anyway, so really when it comes to BMW cars, they're just more sporty. And really the only difference between the BMW car well, on the just street driving. Mercedes can actually be a lot better just because with the Mercedes you have all the low down torque and grunt and that sort of thing. Whereas these BMWs, they had all their power up high, which makes it stupid if you throw on a blower, really. You put a supercharger on this, especially a centrifugal one, it just, it makes your RPMs, go, make it so that even more of your power is up high and you don't get, up, get it up to the high RPM, but really when you uh, notice the BMWs shine through is when you take them on the track. That's when the BMWs, they're just better. That was not, I did spin the wheels a little bit there, but it wasn't too bad. This really is the best car you should never own. Really, that's what it is. If you're willing to deal with all the things that you know, go bad with it, and really, if you're a BMW technician and you know a lot about BMWs and what to do with them, okay, yeah, it might be a good decision for you to get it just because of, really, this car, it's kind of a legend. Everyone loves these. The thing is, is that the manuals in these, because they don't break, those ones actually do uh, sell for about, like, a $50,000 premium. Well, not necessarily 50. I am, look, but they provide, they, they are a big premium over the normal ones. Oh, and I didn't notice that the light was red. Okay, I got a big, uh, I'll see how good this is. It's not pretty good. It's just kind of quiet. That was 90. Okay. I think I'm going to turn right here. Right on red. Okay, I live in America. I can go right on red. Okay, light's green here. That's good. Actually, I am going to go left. 
I know that it's kind of idiotic to go over a solid white line, so. Yeah. Hi, person. Oh, hi, copper. Okay, listen. This is... I have to do it. I have to flow this car. It sounds absolutely amazing. Oh, and that was crap. For me, really, one of the best things about this car is the naturally aspirated V10. If you're pushing on it, it's a V10. There's all 10 cylinders to suck all that fuel in, and you won't get the best fuel economy. But really, what I admire about these cars is they're able to make them car is they're able to make these cars pretty comfortable, while also being pretty sporty. Well, I noticed that this car is really hard to stall in the game, but also I don't like it because it it's too slippy the clutches. And really, one thing that I noticed is that I I can rev this engine out to 6,000 RPM in the game. And I don't notice it because of how quiet it is. Okay. So it looks like I gotta go right here. I'm gonna get out on the highway in just a minute and see how it does on the highway. But in general, I really like this car. And I guess this is the highway. I really am. I'm gonna do a speed run on this car. See how that does. Um, Oh, you were asking for it, bud. Yeah, in general, this is a really good car. Okay. Now I'm just gonna find a place to pull off and end the episode, because really, there's no... Oh. It's his fault. Yeah, so I'm just gonna go find a place to pull over and end the episode because really with this car there's nothing else really to talk about because it's a BMW, it's a great car, and that's the summary of it. Oh, and also it's endlessly unreliable. Okay, go into this lane here. And turn to the gas station. That was a <laughs> So, hopefully you liked this episode, and goodbye.